All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is uh, Mr. Black Hammer 2021. I probably should have did this earlier, but I'm not going to do it now. Um, I'm making my Monday Night Raw review from last night. I'm making this review while NXT is on. I, um, and the reason why I'm doing it now, I might as well, because um, NXT is on. So I will go through what happened last night on Monday Night Raw, and I will talk about the news and rumors. Um, my video was sponsored by, by, uh, JD from New York, by, by Pro, Pro Wrestling, the Pro Wrestling, the Wrestle Talk, the, uh, Wrestle Votes. Hit that like button, leave a comment, please subscribe to my channel. Let's see if we get to 100 likes or 100 views. Alright. Now, um, last night on Monday Night Raw, it was awful. It was a snooze fest. The show was absolutely fucking boring. Now, and that was the go home show to United Champion this Saturday. Um, there's a lot I would talk about before I talk about NXT and the news and rumors. Okay, so. So, um, as you all know, um, now, um, just an awful show as Vince McMahon, oh wait, it's supposed to say something, hold on. Pay attention. New L vibe high run punk. Uh, my bad, I did I did not want to do that, let me just, uh, try and look at my notes here. Just an awful show as Vince McMahon destroys another war. Um, this may be the second worst show. A Monday Night Raw, the second worst show. Now Vince McMahon, Vince McMahon. Now what happened on Monday Night Raw, May twenty second? We know that Brock Lesnar and Cody Rhodes in the same building, setting up their matches. Oh joy, we had Imperium battle Matt Riddle, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens in a Superman tag. Trick Trent signed a contract with Becky Lynch. Yeah. You know, you know, I don't know. One night while was just awful. It was terrible. Now I did saw the other podcasters. I saw Solomon Monster and JD from New York and Fight Full Pro Wrestling and Joe Conan. I saw how they how they reacted and how they did their their review. And I agree with every single one of them. One night while boring. We had some rematches, same old shit, a lot of filler. Crowd didn't care, crowd was dead for most of the show. I think the best part I really enjoyed was the beatdown from Brock Lesnar to Cody Rhodes. I thought that was awesome. That was the only thing I really had positive about this show. I would say the main event, but it, it was your every six man match on the show. All right. I mean, um, thought the match was just awful. And this is what WWE does when they book magic like this. Um, uh, nobody gave a shit about these math. Um, these math they were terrible. I didn't give a fuck about this math. I didn't. I mean, like. So, um, so, so the show opened up with Brock Lesnar attacking Cody Rhodes, the first 30 minutes of the show opening, he attacked Cody Rhodes, he, I, I think he legit broke his arm, he may have legitimately broke his arm, and Cody Rhodes was out, Cody Rhodes was attacked by Brock Lesnar back days, he may have broke his arm, um, And then after that, we did get Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman, who is a member of the SmackDown roster, he came out tonight on Monday Night Raw. Just like last week, he comes out this week. Paul Heyman issued a spoiler for the Undisputed Tag Team title matches. He said that Roman Reigns and Solo will win the title from Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. And then after that, we did get 
Bronson Reed versus Ricochet in a squash. Now Bronson Reed was dominant. Bronson Reed he's still being booked great. Hopefully they do something with him. Now now uh, Ricochet is the right guy he should be. This was really a squash. I mean Ricochet is in the tag team with Braun. We haven't seen Braun since the uh since, since the draft, I don't think. But Bronson Reed beat Ricochet in like a squash match. Um, after that, we did get, hold on, and then there was another, I didn't, I think there was another one, Brock Lesnar twice, once it, I just finished saw on Cody Rhodes, after that, and again, legit, broke Cody Rhodes' arm, um, after that, we did get, the Alpha Academy versus the Viking Raiders and a pretty I think the math went three minutes. This math was pretty much nothing. Now can someone tell me why is why is Massine why is Massine all of a sudden siding with Chad Gable and all like is he still part on Math and Models? Are they still a thing? Why are they still together? I don't know why. But Chad Gable and Odin, they beat the Viking Raiders in like three minutes. And this is what we see in WWE. Most of the matches on this show were three minutes. Not giving enough time. Nobody cares. No one's getting over on this show. And I, I'm, I'm kind of over this storyline with Chad Gable, Otis, and Massine, the creep. It's not doing anything for me. It's been going for like, what, two, three months? Um, this, um, this began before WrestleMania even started. I don't, I don't know what we're doing here. Now we, now we did get uh, Shinsuke Nakamura versus Finn Balor in a pretty good match. I think Finn Balor won with the help of Damian Priest. The match was pretty good. It, it will give him a little bit of time. I don't know where Nakamura is going to go. Hopefully they still book him. If he'll be in the mid card, maybe for the world title. I don't know. But Finn Balor did get the win. Finn Balor had the most drawn for Judgment Day. Now, I also wanted to bring up that last week, J.D. McDonough, after he beat Dolph Ziggler, we saw Finn Balor in the background. We saw him up top of the stairs looking at J.D. McDonough. Now, see the planted for J.D. McDonough to join Judgment Day in this history with him and Finn Balor, but, but last night on Raw, J.D. McDonough was not on, on the show. He was actually he was actually scrapped due to time. So I don't know what's going on with him, but he wasn't on the show. Now we did get Raquel Rodriguez versus Sony Deville. And she did win. And then she got jumped by Sonya and Chelsea Green. Chelsea Blackcock came out and helped her. So next week for the next week to crown the new women's tag team titles, we have Chelsea Blackheart and with Raquel Rodriguez teaming up again Ronda Rousey, Shayna Baszler, and Chelsea Green and Sonya Deville and the other team. I forgot what the other team was. Oh, it, it was Bailey and um Eo Sky. Yeah, next week for for the to crown the new to crown the new tag team title for the women. In a fatal four way next week. I think we all know that Wanda and Shane are going to win that. I mean, the reason why that they couldn't because Wanda Rousey was out with an injury. But but since he's all healed up, they're feeling better. I think her and Shane will win those titles and they'll probably have them for a long time. I mean, I wish that they got rid of the women tag team titles. They are devalued. Nobody gives a shit about them. There's no division, there's no real tag teams. You might as well give it to Shane and Wanda. Shayna and Wanda, and let them be champion for a few months, and that's it. Now, after that map, we did get that back day segment when Raquel select Shotzi as a new tag team partner. For no reason, I don't know why. We haven't seen Shotzi in a few months, she's sheeping off TV. I do feel bad for Raquel. Hey, 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 smiling Raquel. I mean, Raquel on the baby face one. She's been the tag team for a while, first with Aaliyah, Liv Morgan, 
Blake Morgan, he's out with injuries. He's going to be out for a few months. And also, I just want you, I just want you guys to know that that um, Dakota Kai is going to be out for a few months as well. She was also injured last week. I think she has a torn ACL. That, mean, that means she may be out for a long time, probably like half a year, I think. Yeah, so that's not good for damage control. That one half of damage control can be out with injury. So I hopefully when she comes back, she feel better. Look more, hopefully that hopefully that she feel better, but she's out. All right, now after that we did get um, Zoe Snark defeating Candice LeRae. The match went two minutes. This map went two minutes. Now Zoe Snark, I think this was her. Was this her debut? No, it wasn't her debut. Last week was her debut. But this week, she beat Candice LeRae in two minutes because of Nikki. Because of Nikki Cross, she came out and caught Candice the match. Two minutes. And this is what we're doing with women's wrestling. The match went two minutes. Nobody cared. Zoe Snark got nobody asking. They hyped up a vignette for Zoe Snark. And I'm like, what? Where was this three weeks ago when she was called up? When she was in the draft and she wrestled her first match last week. But now they showed it. But nobody cares. It's hard pe it's hard for fans to get invested when nobody cares. And this is why women like Zoe Snart, Candice Murray, and all these other women who get called up and are true like shit. And this is the problem that they really had when they keep on pushing Becky Lynch, Charlotte Flair, Bailey, Bianca Belair. And all these women, Ronda Rousey, and not getting new ones over. Zoe Snark, how long before she gets buried? How long before she gets released? You don't think that Vince McMahon is going to release her? Even Candice LeRae, what's she going to do? She hasn't done, she has not done anything on the main roster. Uh, Nikki Cross, she, she was in catering. Now we're seeing her bad days. I think Nikki Cross wrestled on main event earlier. I think she wrestled with Emma on main event. And, and that's just sad. But yeah, uh, Zoe Snart, she, she beat Candice LeRae in two minutes. Who cares? After that, we did get Brock Lesnar coming out, addressing Cody Rhodes, saying that he saying that Cody Rhodes will not wrestle him at night champion. He said he, he issued an open challenge, but then Cody Rhodes came out with a, he came out with a sling on his arm. Cody Rhodes came out, Brock Lesnar attacked him, suplexed him, put on the Kamara lock, and I think he legit broke his arm. Cody Rhodes and injured. I believe Cody Rhodes is legit hurt. He legit injured his arm. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Brock Lesnar legit injured his arm. Also, we got, um, uh, what's his name? We got Dominic again versus... Well, actually, no. We have Dominic versus Apollo Crews. Apollo Crews, as you guys know, he got called back up to the main roster. He back him on that Raw. And this is how we're booking Apollo Crews. Booking him like a loser, a jobber. Dominic beat Apollo Crews with the help of Rhea Ripley. You know, I, I, I don't know why we're burying talent like this. Apollo Crews was a great hero. He was booked great two years ago because of his... After he had a table baby face one, then he turned him heel, then he went to, to NST, they gave him a, a new character, he would be in book great, then they call him up to the main roster, if I kill him, and I'll be back, being booked like a loser, a nobody, booked to lose, losing to Dominic, losing to Dominic Mysterio. Now I get it, we didn't really help him in this map, but it's not getting the polish over. The map was alright. Like less, it was less than ten minutes, and that was it. Unbelievable. After that, we did get the contrast signing between Becky Lynch and Trish Stratus. Holy shit, this was awful. It was, it was terrible. You know, nobody can. This is a dead feud. Nobody gives a shit about these feuds. You want to know the worst part? The sad part about this is that Becky Lynch and Trish Stratus is your only top woman feud. On the main roster, there is no other feud that's being booked like this. These two have been going out for two months, two months. Meanwhile, you got Bianca Belair, 
who defend the title against Asuka. There's no build, there's no storyline. It was just made to put Bianca on the show because he had to defend the title. And then you got Rhea Ripley defending the SmackDown Women title against Natalia. That will probably be your bathroom break. It will probably be boring. And that's not a big feud. It'll just make it official because Rhea has to defend it at Night of Champion because it's Night of Champion. Every title has to be defended. But, but damn, this this entire feud, I hope it's over. I hope they end it. Some people think that it's going to continue. Solo Monster said it might continue. If it's not, then we'll be doing here. There is no reason for it to continue. It needs to end Night of Champion. Trish Stratus is not going to beat Becky Lynch clean. Unless there's a fuck finish, but I'll just be lazy, especially on pay-per-view. Like, why have the match at all? Becky Lynch is going to win, and we'll move on. And we, Becky Lynch will probably be in Money Bank. Or she might be in a big feud with Rhea Ripley, hopefully. Maybe at SummerSlam. So I think this will end. I think Becky will win clean, because Trish Stratus is a part-timer. She's on a part-time schedule. She's not working many dates. She's not going to wrestle on Raw. She's not going to wrestle at Money Bank or SummerSlam. This is good. This is used as a one-off. She's on TV because of Vince McMahon. Because because um, they don't trust their young their young talent or any young new woman. Trish Trash is here to put over Becky Lynch and that's it. So when, when Trish Trash loses, she'll be off TV for a while. She's not going to wrestle unless we get to another Saudi show. But get Trish Trash off TV. She's old. She passed her, she passed her prime. And I mean, I'm not that big. I'm not that big of a fan of Trish Stratus. I'm more of a fan of Lita, but I'm not a fan of Trish Stratus really. Not as I used to back in the day, but yeah. The contrast side was awful. Trish Stratus as a baby, as a heel, is not believable. The promo was terrible. She's not that good in the ring. She's old. She passed her prime. She's taken. Like like having her on TV is taking spots from people who deserve it, people who need to be built up. So yeah. Um. This segment was awful, embarrassing. Math was shit. This segment was shit. I cannot wait for it to be done. No, and it will be over. It will be over at Night of Champion. This will not continue. Now I can go through the, the main event. Now first, uh, the way how Watt opened the show was um, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, they came out to open the show of Watt. They addressed the bloodline. They addressed that they will be solo in Roman Reigns. And then we get Imperium come out because, you know, um, they have a match. Um, they, um, um, they hyped this last week to see who will be the mystery partner for Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn to take on Imperium, Matt Riddle. Matt Riddle was kind of obvious, and it was, it was too predictable. I think we all knew it was going to happen. Because all three of these guys teamed up against the Bloodline at Backlash two weeks ago. Now, some people thought, oh, it could be Drew McIntyre. No, it's not going to be Drew McIntyre. Why would you wait Drew McIntyre for turn off of that? I think Drew McIntyre will come back as a heel. I don't know when he's coming back, but he, he, he might come back to be in time for Money in the Bank or something. And he might be a heel. And he can be a big program for Seth Rollins when he, he wins the title. But yeah, the but yeah, um, this all led to the main event: Matt Riddle, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn versus Imperium. Pretty good match. It was decent. It was every Seth Man match that you see. And um, Matt Riddle, Sami Zayn, and Kevin Owens they won. They beat Imperium in a pretty good match. I believe Sami Zayn got the pin. Hit the Haruka kick on one on one of the Imperium members, and they won the match. Now the end of the show, we saw Cody Rhodes backstage with Triple H. He tells Triple H he will battle Brock Lesnar despite his injury. Triple H told him you shouldn't you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't wrestle. You're gonna hurt yourself. He tried to talk Cody Rhodes out of it, but Cody Rhodes said he wants to fight Brock Lesnar. And, and Triple Ray gave him the pat on the back. He told him, all right, good luck. Um, a lot of people think that this is going to lead to a third match. That that they, that they injured Cody Rhodes to have Brock Lesnar beat him in a squash match. Because if Brock Lesnar, and we all know the match is going to be short, 
it'll be five minutes or less than ten minutes. And it's Saudi Arabia, so I don't think Brock will lose in Saudi Arabia. And if he does, there's no re there is no reason to continue the feud. I think the feud will end at Night Champion. And then we can move Cody Rhodes to Money Bank. Cody Rhodes will be in the ladder match at Money Bank. He's not going to wrestle Brock Lesnar. I don't know why people keep saying this. Solomon Monster, JD, and Fightful, they keep saying this is going to lead to a third match. No, it's not. Cody Rhodes and Brock Lesnar will end. This feud is going to end at Night Champions. It's not going to continue at Money in the Bank. There is no way. You're not going to book another month with Cody Rhodes and Brock Lesnar and do the same old shit. People are not going to care. People will not be interested. And it will just be too predictable. And Brock Lesnar and Cody Rhodes and another match for Money in the Bank in London? No, it's not going to happen. And we all know Brock ain't going to wrestle on the loss, so... This, this this match will end. Whoever wins, move on. It's not going to be at Money Bank. It's not going to be at SummerSlam. That's a waste. And but that's way too long. So I think this should end. I mean, the, but the Brock Lesnar win, or the Cody will find some other weird way to win this match. Is it, 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 there going to be a fuck finish? Because I can't see a clean finish from Cody Will to Brock Lesnar. I think Brock Lesnar will win and just move on. This match is not happening at Money Bank at all. It's not. And I don't think it's going to happen. I think we'll, especially when you have two ladder matches at Money Bank and you have two world champions that will possibly be on Money Bank. And then the women's title and one of the mid card title will be on the show. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Well, that was Monday Night Raw. That was Monday Night Raw. Terrible show. A boring show. Waste of time. One of the worst show. Second worst Raw this year in 2023. I actually forgot to mention about the promo package between Seth Rollins. I forgot to talk about the promo package that Seth Rollins was cutting on tonight. night. Now, the, now these promo package is for tape because... We all know that Wallen was not on the show last night. He's shooting that movie. But about some about the Avengers or something. He's shooting a movie. He's in a part of the movie. But he, he will be at Night Champions in We Have Saudi Arabia. And I think he will win the titles. But anyway, that was Monday Night Wall. The second worst Monday Night Raw of 2023. I mean, yeah. Okay, so, um, I will do Night of Champion Prediction probably on Thursday. Or maybe on Friday, I don't know. Maybe Thursday or Friday I'll do my prediction. I'll just wait. I'm not going to do it now. But, um, the news and rumors, I probably should have talked about SmackDown. Now, the reason why I didn't do SmackDown on Friday, because the show was boring. There was nothing on the show. There was nothing new. I actually fell asleep for most of the show. All there was was, the only thing that mattered was the whole thing with the bloodline. With Roman Reigns and Solo challenging Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. They had their face off on SmackDown. And then for the mass, it wasn't that good. We all know that the story is Roman Reigns destroying the bloodline. Um, yeah. Now, the news and rumor I want to talk about is um, AJ Styles calls new title secondary. AJ Styles was on a, I think he was on an ESPN show, where he buried the new World Heavyweight Championship. On Saturday afternoon, yeah. You would think AJ Styles would be proud of competing for the new World Heavyweight Championship, but instead he called it a secondary title. Because Roman Reigns is already holding two World Championships. Also, AEW Collision is set to debut 
and more drama with CM Punk as he comes as comes along with it. Um, with news now AEW suing CM Punk. What this really mean for AEW and CM Punk? I don't know. It kind of devaluing having AJ Styles bury the new World Heavyweight Title and devaluing by saying it's a secondary title because Reigns have both titles. You, you know, it kind of kind of buries it and devalues it. Now we know there's no way not to let AJ Styles win it. Seth Rollins is gonna win it because AJ is on SmackDown and he's and he's in this program with Grayson Waller. So we know that Seth Rollins will win this match and let that be it. Okay. So uh, yeah. So um, yeah. And then we had the main event with. Um yeah. Ripley gets added. I mean, all right. Now, I will try to like talk about something else before I move on. Now we know there's a careless night champion build. Um, I don't think actually I forgot to talk about this. The other news and rumor I want to talk about is um, Bray Wyatt finish, finally finished with WWE. Goodbye Bray Wyatt. Also AEW declined, um, denied their rehire, Ace Steel. I'm just going to throw it out. Ace Steel. So, um, Bray Wyatt could be finally done with WWE after a report revealed he is no longer eternally listed on the after WWE roster after news of an illness. Had kept them off WTV, and also, as I said, AEW now demanding their rehiring Ace Steel from AEW Collision. Um, Tony Khan had a backup plan in case the CM Punk did not show up for the debut episode in Chicago at the United Center. And W5 Forever has an actual release date. Yeah. Now Bray Wyatt, we haven't seen Bray Wyatt since back in I think back in March, I think. I think it was back in March. Now the character Bray Wyatt is dead and is buried. Nobody will care about him. Nobody takes him seriously. I mean everything that he did was lame. Now Bray Wyatt was pulled to wrestle Bobby Lashley at WrestleMania but got pulled because of of illness. We don't work on our Bray Wyatt. But the character is dead. No one cares about it, no one takes it seriously. I feel bad for Bray Wyatt, but that's how they booked him. They have to admit the man thought of Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt had been buried. And they really, they killed all momentum from Bray Wyatt. All of momentum. Yeah. Now I can talk about NFT. As you guys know, NFT is on tonight. It's not a clock right now, so we got like an hour left before it's over. As you guys know, the NFT Battleground Go Home Show. As you guys know, the pay-per-view NFT Battleground is on Sunday, I believe. It's on Sunday after Night of Champions. I think it's also, yeah, it's also the same night as AEW Double or Nothing. Now, I will do an AEW Dynamite Go Home show on Wednesday to talk about the show. I will do that tomorrow to talk about AEW. But right now, I'm going to talk about NFT, the NFT Battleground Go Home show, the women's semifinal. We have Cora J versus Lusa Fagra. I forgot her name, but we also had uh, Roxanne Perez. In the tournament against uh, Tiffany Stratton, I think. Um, the investigation of Tony D'Angelo continues. Also, Dalva Kato defeated Essam. Reggie is no longer scripts. 
All right. Well, it's been about 30 minutes, so. Uh, we still got the Mac going on. Um, and the T is still going on. The vehicles. From the very first touch. Wow, this is um this is non commercial. Alright. Face of the world hangs in the balance. Well then that was it for today. I will end the video. Until next time, I'll be back with more.